So just want to start off by thanking everyone. It's been really um, exciting discussions, and hopefully I'll be able to add a bit um, um, about my research. So I'm looking at the role of IT in delivering sustainable cities. A bit about me. I, I'm um, a Bristol graduate. I grad um, taught by Colin and a few other people in the room. Um, I studied civil engineering. Um, and then uh, um, that was into, I finished that in 2009 and then um, joined the Systems Center um, to do some research. I'm working with Arup. So I'm mainly based in London. Um, help, so that's me um, as a smart city consultant. Um, but um, being part of the center means that I get to do um, other exciting things. This is me at, um, trying to explain my research to some bemused looking 10 year olds in a shopping center, which was a very, very valuable and fun experience. So um, I'm looking at smart cities um, and how that can contribute to sustainability. I'm aware that people in the room might already have some understanding about what a smart city means. Um, can I have a show of hands of people who have heard of a smart city? Great. So there'll be lots of perspectives in the room. What, what, do, uh, what are your views on what a smart city is? A bit more difficult to answer, perhaps. Any ideas to throw out there? Okay, fine. Um, um, broadly, um, I think a smart city is a city that is using IT in a strategic way um, in order to de um, deliver their high-level goals. So nice and broad. And the problem with that is that it is nice and broad, and people are struggling to understand what it really might mean for them. IBM um, say that and other, and other large technology um, consultant co um, companies say that smart cities are um, the future. That they're going to, um, you have to be thinking about it now and you have to invest now if you want to get value out of it. Um, they say that the more data we have, if we can measure everything, then we can have a really good understanding about what's going on in our cities and, uh, and in our um, systems. And if we couple that with actuators, then we can understand what's going on, but optimize it in real time and change the system as it's running. And that the idea is that that will lead to um, sustainability um, and resource um, consumption reduction, and everyone will be happier and it'll be fantastic. Um, there's an example in Rio, IBM um, and Oracle joined up to deliver a big city con uh, control room. And um, so they've got a central place with loads of fancy screens where they can um, combine lots of different types of information and manage the system. So um, they have a problem with um, natural disasters. They have lots of floods in Rio. And the idea of if we combine weather, st weather station with um, uh, information and predictions with um, um, emergency response, then we'll have a better uh, system. And that makes sense. Um, so there are, there are some p aspects that make sense. Um, and so great, let smart cities are the future. Unfortunately, um, city leaders are struggling to come to terms with what this might actually mean in terms of how they invest. Um, so great, I can invest, I'll, I'll buy, I'll buy a, a system off IBM and that will solve my problems. Well. I've got a lot of things that I uh, goals that I want to achieve in the city, and giving d does that mean giving 100 million pounds to IBM? Not so sure. How, and I think there are two main reasons why there are problems with this. <laughs> Firstly, the large technology companies are um, not speaking the right language to um, city leaders, and they're not understanding what the the core priorities are, but also um, ways in which they're able to behave and able to invest and able to, um, to work with people. Um, secondly, I think there's um, another problem, which is the lack of understanding of IT and technology and the implications of that on society, on the side of government. Yes, there can be um, systems optimization, but actually, um, I think that we can use smart cities in a much more intelligent way um, to create 
um, uh, more, exter more external values. So let's dig a little bit deeper into what I mean by a smart city. Um, I think there are three interrelated related buckets. Optimization, which we've talked about, is one of those. Um, but also, I believe that IT can be used to innovate services within your city. And the third bucket is looking at the broader marketplace of information that we can create. Obviously, they're not actual buckets. They're concepts, so I'll change that picture. Optimization, we've talked about. Um, we've talked about using data and actuation in a systems sense. Um, but actually, we can also optimize with IT through system process changes or database integration. And then there's another bucket of, of service innovation. So actually, um, a step change in the way we decide to deliver services can, can, um, can be driven by technology that we, that we have. So while we might have a transport system um, that we might want to optimize, actually, we might have a new technology come along that changes the way that we want to travel in the first place so you, can, so you don't need to worry about the original um, optimization problem, perhaps. Um, and then thirdly is this information marketplace. I've got um, a quote here that I'm, I was just reading this morning on my way here, which is from a, um, that um, articulates it quite well. Broadly, the information marketplace um, says that we're, cities are actually getting quite a lot of um, value out of information within their cities already, and small companies are, um, are, are really innovating and creating really dynamic marketplace around this information that's available. And this is a quote from a blog by Patchbay, it's an um, Internet of Things company. Um, and they say that smart cities cannot be defined by one application or central organizing body that sets pre-programmed limits. They will be defined by individual citizens who are anxious to collaborate with each other to create devices and applications that solve specific problems. Smart cities will be places that foster creativity, where citizens are generators of ideas, services, and solutions, rather than subservient and passive resist recipients of them. Like Jane Jacobs, I believe that citizens will shape the cities of the future themselves, creating spontaneous order from below. And then they go on to argue that, let's say IBM did all of that. It would still have forgotten that smartness is not just about efficiency, but that crucially, it's also about creating a flexible system that can dynamically adjust to changes, one that responds to unpredictable phenomena in a way that is not planned, and that harnesses the creative capacity of inhabitants, which I think is probably a bit more articulate than I could have done uh, myself here. But it's about looking at um, the people within the system being an important creator of that system. Um, which government needs to understand its role um, in fostering in the smart city. So it gets a bit more complex. Um, a quick analogy about how these buckets relate to each other. Um, if you look at your human body, you can focus internally on making yourself run a bit better. You can have a bit of surgery to um, unclog your arteries or a heart bypass, and that will help you um, um, run more efficiently, and you'll probably be little bit more sustainable because it'll last a bit longer. Um, but service innovation is looking at how I change my actions, um, how, how I um, behave differently in order to have an effect. Um, and then the information marketplace is a bit more nebulous. It's a much more outside of our control. It's much more complex. It's much bigger. Um, and I think that's, we can analogize it to the food production. So. Um, uh, there are lots of things going on. We can make choices about that. We can have an impact by, um, by maybe growing our own food or going to, or choosing to go to um, a market or um, Asda. Um, and so I think this shows that, I mean, if I eat carrots instead of burgers, I'm less likely to need um, a heart bypass. Um, equally, if I cycle more, maybe that will have an impact on th those things. Um, yeah, so I'll move on because I'm aware of time. So in reality, when we're looking at smart cities, IT vendors need to understand that cities are unique. 
the, same, the solution that works in Rio can't just be cut and paste it to London. Um, they're messy. They're both strategic and opportuni opportunistic. So they'll have a, um, a long-term vision and plan. Um, but opportunities might come on. That might be transform transformative technology or just a really big pot of money from national government um, that will drive the choices they make. They're, they're bureaucratic, complex, dynamic, um, dependent on um, local, national, um, and international drivers. And I think they're really um, going to be an exciting place um, to be, and I'm really glad that I can be a part of that. I also see an opportunity in IT, and this may be part of um, service innovation or information marketplace, in, in really creating better dialogue with the public. And I think that's a really key part of smart cities. Um, in LA, they're doing a new transport planning strategy, and they've called it LA to be. Quite cute. Um, and they're, they're really having a focus right, th right the way through their three-year planning um, making, a decision-making process, where they are using traditional sort of town hall um, type meetings to engage with the public, but there's a genu genuine commitment to feeding that into the process and, not, and not, it not being a one-way ex explanation, stakeholder management exercise. It's really um, being used to try and add value to what they're already doing. So there's, um, they've got a virtual town hall where um, they'll open up discussions for a couple of days and allow people to um, talk it through in a way that is appropriate to them and uh, um, IT platforms are being used to facilitate that. But they're also bringing it out onto the street where they're capturing people as they're actually um, in the process of moving, in the process of um, trans being part of the transportation infrastructure um, and engaging people in really fun ways. So I think that's a really key opportunity for smart cities that we can actually understand what's going on um, with people in the moment and you help that to um, make decisions about long-term planning um, but also about um, decisions we make day to day. So I just want to finish with the key messages I would like to feed into the discussion this afternoon. Um, firstly, infrastructure investment should be seen as contributing to a wider ecosystem of economic, social and environmental factors and I think a lot of people have um, touched upon that this morning. Um, proposals for city investment need to be need to incorporate the messy realities of local government um, functioning, and I think a lot of people have talked about that. And thirdly, um, technology in cities is interwoven with um, social values, um, and that both defines and is defined by people's behaviour. So in that sense, investment must come out of sensitive dialogue with the citizenry and an understanding of their values. 